Hello there, this is Critical from Critical Media. Just taking a look at the 2023 hardcover, or should I say deluxe hardcover release, of The Good Asian. This is a story by Pornsnak Pichetcho and the art from Alexander Tefenki. Although I should also mention the historical consultant, Grant Din, as the era of this book setting is very important to the narrative. And what we usually do at this channel is give you an idea of what to expect if you ever come across these books in the wild. So we go over the exterior, some bonus material, art and plot points, and then a brief review at the end. Now this series was always on the radar, it was always awesome. I was even tempted to get the uh, trades when they came out. But uh, admittedly, I always held out hope that maybe there would be a deluxe, and lo and behold, here we are. Uh, and this book, yes, as you can kind of see, it was a darling of 2021 when it came out. Hence the uh, Will Eisner winner here. And yeah, it's pretty much because it nailed the noir genre in a perfect sense. Uh, my favorite genre in general is detective crime noir genres. So this pretty much fits the bill in every single way. Uh, but anywho, at least back to the tr tradition of this channel. Uh, in terms of the exterior, you're seeing a, another striking release from Image. As mentioned, usually Image, the, when they release a hardcover, it's usually deluxe format, very similar to Marvel and DC, or at least Marvel's uh, oversized, as they call them. But very striking with the gold foil bordering, this movie poster design from Dave Johnson, who ironically did, uh, of course, 100 Bullets, another awesome crime drama. But anywho, on the spine here, very unique that it's actually a gloss design. The gold foil still carries forward. Awesome. Beautiful, actually. And, of course, the exterior here. Your typical fair synopsis with the accolades and that gold foil following. But, yeah, very striking. Uh, the book itself is about 300 pages. It was about uh, 10 issues overall. But, as you can see, uh, this book it's, has an excellent eye. Very on point. And the story does use a few two-page spreads. And because it's an image release, those two-page spreads are fully readable. Like, there's no gutter loss, really very on point but at least now on to the bonus material here now they did incorporate as mentioned it's very important the historical reverence so you do get a lot of that here you know just educating the readers on what was going on with america yes the whole chinese being a part of the first real effect to immigration bans of america very on point though and it doesn't just tell you the uh, u.s side of things it also reminds you that yeah they were coming to you know, Canada as well as Mexico as well. Not just the East Asian folks, but eventually that ban ended up extending into just Asian folks, like as well as Arabs, right? But very intriguing, uh, of course, material here. And yes, they did include this Masi or Masai uh, trial scenario because it is kind of a reference to what happens in the book. Like it's not direct, but it does, it's, it's wise that they included it here. Um, but aside from that, you just get a little bit of a prose of the, of course, pitch of the story. Uh, some, of course, just some simple designs here from Tefenki. Very striking, very on point, very consistent art style. Very on point. It's, I almost feel like it's like a slightly better version of Dustin Nguyen's or Nguyen's uh, style. But now on to the uh, extended covers here, the variants. This one here from Mike Choi, very evocative, very on point. Has a very has this excellent lifelike but painted, you know, oil painted design, unique that's for sure of Edison Hark, uh, and then this other one here is probably my second favorite, uh, the Yevender or sorry Yedvender Singrana's, very movie poster feeling, and that's another part of this book it has a very cinematic appeal, so very accurate. Even the uh, cover of the book itself from Dave Johnson has a movie poster you know feel to it as well. And pretty much the bonus material just ends with uh, just the author bios, just at the very end of it there. Forgive me for even uh, trying to skip it there for you. But there we go. Yeah, just this part, the biographies, typical bios, right? Now, for the story, I've kind of hinted out already that it's a detective noir set in 1936 as per the title here. And it follows the story, or should I say this character, of Edison Hark, uh, this Chinese-American detective he as you get the impression he originally works in hawaii but uh his base was san francisco a highly pop high populous asian community at the time 
um, I think even even to this day. But as you can see, like this book has a very unique style of its paneling. So yeah, right off the bat, you see this the next day graphic design, very on point. You're introduced to this character O'Malley, the the local San Francisco uh, detective. Certainly has his own way of uh, prejudice, let's say. And that's another thing about this book. Being a noir, you do anticipate it's going to be a more mature book. So yes, there is going to be sex, there is going to be violence, there is going to be cursing. But it's done in very well portions, you know, as per noir. You know, you get a taste of everything, but nothing too gratuitous. There is nudity, yes, so I'll try to avoid those pages for the sake of this video. But um, yes, nonetheless, it really just boils down to this. Edison Hark, he's called back to... Of course, uh, San Francisco by his benefactors, uh, Mason Caraway, to look for one of his house servants, Ivy Chen, because she's gone. Because she's gone missing, and you're kind of introduced to this dynamic of how, yeah, Edison Hark was even related to these folks at all, and that's an excellent style from Pichet Schott that he naturally introduces uh, like a history to this bo book, not too much exposition. If anything, most of the exposition I find in this book is more just trying to place you in the, I guess, the era more so. But uh, as per noir, the main character is almost following any sort of pessimistic angle where anything he touch, bur touches burns, basically. Like, if, you, if he tries to help somebody, they're probably going to end up worse off. And, you know, he's always dealing with the guilt of that. Typical suffering hero of noir. But, um, yeah, you're just seeing this excellent design here, these awesome kinetics here from Tefenki. Uh, and the introduction of this other aspect of the story, this folklore mercenary killer that just came to town as well, uh, Hui Long. And as you're seeing, these awesome kinetics, and also this excellent banter to match it. I love it. Because I like how Edison Park is a real Chinese-American, right? He has a lot of those sensibilities, very on point. Even the way they kind of go over this, the relationship with uh, Victoria here, as usual with Noir, a blonde bombshell, but also another character, like usually an ingenue, is introduced. This character here, another woman that uh, at least has a lot of affection for uh, Edison, uh, Lucy Fan. But I love the way this overall narrative goes. Like it, it still manages to piece the historical reverence of what was going on in the 30s, along with you know the history of you know the past prior to this book, while still staging everything pretty well. Um, I just highlight this page because I remember, at least uh, in school, there was some sort of propaganda poster, and I kind of remember it kind of looked like this, like Uncle Sam holding back, um, or at least maybe putting down Asian Americans. I remember seeing that image a while ago. But uh, I always found that that was a nice little, uh, I guess, reference to it. But yeah, uh, again, I like the way the story is always conveyed, where it doesn't have to be direct exposition. It's like other characters talking and you get this 1980 style of storytelling. A lot of block paneling with a lot of dialogue. And yet it fits. It's so well done. Um, you can't help but like uh, this character, this ingenue character of uh, Lucy Fan. You can't help but like her. And, and what, I like, what I do like about Porn Snacks uh, writing is that characters don't stay status quo. They change. Like, for instance, she's enamored with Edison in the beginning and then her philosophy changes about him a little bit later. Love that about this book. Um, but anywho, uh, just to give you an idea of like a two-page spread that I mentioned earlier, uh, what's good about this is that it has like next to no gutter loss. This is just a two-page spread here. And you can kind of see what I mean. Like you don't lose anything. It's all fitting. That's just the beauty of Image Comics binding. Very on point. And also these little nods of, you know, the character's ability. Like he's a detective, so he tends to notice things and they always kind of use this you know, designed to kind of outline that. Very on point there. And again, with the graphic design, probably one of the most unique panels of the book. This is definitely a graphic artist's style, where they use a somebody's sleeve to create the panels. Very on point, so accurate, so lovely. And in true noir fashion, they do have these uh, pages of like color overlays or muted color design so that other colors pop out, i.e. the blood in this kinetics fight. Once again, awesome work here. So on point. Um, and because it's a detective noir genre, I'm not going to go too far into the plot. It's better that you guys read it. It's very intriguing. It's very riveting throughout. And it has a very cinematic feel, as you can kind of see with this uh, plotting here. 
excellent. It almost has a uh, like an Ang Lee or even a I'm trying to think of the the other uh, director, a John Woo almost aspect here. That's it. But a very on point book book overall. It was worthy of its wins and its accolades. I'm so glad that it got a deluxe hardcover touch. Nice little cinematic uh, approach. This is a high recommends for me. This is a legit 10 out of 10. I know I might be throwing that 10 out of 10 out a lot lately, but hey, sometimes certain books really do fit the description. This is such an excellent release. But hey, at this point in the video, it's not about me at this point. It's always about your opinion, of which I wouldn't mind seeing in the comments down below, as always. Y'all folks take care, and hopefully I'll see you guys in the next video. Take care.